Thanks a lot. I'm really pleased to be here. Um, the, the title of my talk is Digital Methods. It's, um, it's, a, it's a term that I coined um, in 2007. And what I'm going to do today is, uh, is, is try to situate it um, in, in the history of internet-related research. Um, and then subsequently situated in some of the contemporary debates um, in yeah, both the social sciences as well as in the humanities. So my chair is technically in the humanities, but I'm a bit of a social scientist as well. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do. I'm going to try to do both briefly. Situate um, digital methods in in some contemporary debates in the digital humanities as well as in the sort of e sciences, and then I'm going to um, sort of do or show you a few projects uh, of uh, of digital methods. Um, I want to situate it initially in internet-related research, as, as that's where I'm, I'm coming from, as opposed to a sort of pure social science or social research uh, point of view. Um, I would like to sort of summarize internet-related research as, um, as, or periodize it as having sort of three distinctive periods, um, beginning in about, so I mean the pre-period before 1994 you could call a sort of virtual reality period, but around 1994 to uh, about 1998, um, uh, you, we had um, a sort of cyberspace period where we studied the web or the internet as a cyberspace. And, and oftentimes, um, we put forward uh, a kind of distinction between the, the virtual and the real, um, some sort of realm that, 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 that cyberspace was this realm apart. And as such, it, it enabled or afforded um, the potential for, for, for new politics, new corporalities, new identities, identity play, et cetera, um, which around, I think it was 1998 for me, um, maybe 1999, uh, was debunked. All of these claims were quite forcefully debunked um, through the arrival of, of the social scientists. Um, and in particular, I'm thinking about the work of, of Miller and Slater, um, the, the virtual ethnography book, the, the book uh, by Christine Hine. I'm also thinking about, uh, for me, uh, Steve Jones's edited volume of uh, doing internet uh, research, um, where um, the virtual and the real were no longer thought to be apart, but rather sort of um, deeply intertwined. All these claims that were made previously about the sort of separate status of, of, of the web or cyberspace um, were, were complicated, um, but the methodological move for me the, the, what that was interesting um, was that, that a lot of the social scientists, they went offline to study the online. So they went to cyber cafes, um, they interviewed, they surveyed, they, they used this sort of social scientific instrumentarium um, to, to sort of ground, if you will, to ground the, the, the internet or to ground the web. Um, one of the, I mean, I mentioned Miller and Slater. What was so interesting uh, in particular about that study was, was they argued that, that the, the, the Trinidad culture, that the Trinis uh, performed their own culture online. They weren't being globalized. They weren't being sort of cyberspaced out. Um, now, something happens, at least for me, uh, around 2007. And the, and the articles that were put forward um, in, the, in, in, in your presentation um, of Duncan Watts um, in 2007 and Nature uh, 2009, David Lazare uh, and other authors um, in science. Um, for me, I discovered this kind of, this turn, which I, I called in some sense digital methods or, or I've tried to capture in this idea um, that we're now studying the web very differently. The web um, is, no, is no longer some, something, is no longer a cyberspace or a cyberspace to be debunked, or a virtual, um, but rather the virtual has ended, arguably, or this, 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 this web is a separate space that we, we need to refer to as the virtual with an asterisk, as something distinctive from the real, or something a little bit sort of odd about it, not quite real. Um, and for me, uh, it happened around 2007, um, where, the on, where, where online data uh, in some sense, were discovered uh, as as something to be studied uh, for um, for social research or for cultural research, um, and a, a number of things a number of things happened. For me, it was a it was a small sort of study that was written up in a newspaper article in the Netherlands, 
where the it was an, it was the the product of investigative journalism, and the and the journalist was asking himself uh, whether Dutch culture was hardening, uh, was there a rise in hate, um, and this came on the heels of the assassination of uh, of uh, of, of uh, Pim Fortuyn, a populist um, uh, uh, candidate, presidential candidate, or prime minister candidate. Um, as well as the, the murder of Theo van Gogh in, in the Netherlands. Um, and, and what, to, in order to answer this question, is Dutch culture hardening, um, what did the researcher do? Well, the researcher did not embed himself, uh, go native. The researcher did not um, study pamphlets or literature or, or uh, these sorts of things. This, the, the, the researcher did not sort of ask experts um, but rather, they went online, and they went to the Wayback Machine, um, and they um, looked at the history of about 100 um, right-wing and extremist right-wing websites. And they asked themselves the question, kind of almost sort of textual analysis question, of are the right-wing website language, are they beginning to approximate the extremist language? Is that language becoming more extremist on right-wing websites over time? Um, they, they concluded, yes, it is. And they did that with online data. Um, so then suddenly, at least to me, and, and for, I think for many people, I mean many people in this room, this is what we've all been talking about, the web has become this source of, of data. Um, and and, and the, the, the major turn, um, which was already pointed out, was I think was the Lazare article, um, where there are a number of arguments put forward about the kinds of data that the web uh, has um, and what we can do with it, what kind of analyses we can do. Um, <clears throat> now, I, I, I am, I'm, I'm quoting Mike uh, Thelwall um, on, on purpose because I think this is um, a, a fantastic uh, summary. This is from a piece of his web metrics in 2005 of the problem with web data. Or at least when we, th when we web data has a, has a historical reputational problem, first of all. Um, it's because of the web, and we already saw it earlier with, with uh, Rob's uh, analysis. Um, the, the web is associated with rumors um, and pirates and pornographers and, uh, and, and this sort of unsavory ideas. Um, and also, uh, historically, the web is also associated strongly with self-publication, with the lack of editors. So, so the web comes with a quality issue in some sense built in historically. Um, however, I mean, this is what I like about Mike's um, uh, argument. Um, so, so, I mean, he, he argues, and, and this is, this is some, some time ago, but he argues, you know, a lot of people just fully skeptical of the web and just won't go there. And, 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 and Mike mentioned this a little bit uh, today. But if you do go there, um, what you need to do is you need to ground or correlate significantly um, your findings with some non-web data in order to prove that the web data are not wholly random. Um, and, and this is precisely the success, this is precisely the success of the Google flu trends. And for me, this is sort of, this was a, a turning point where, where Google flu trends, and it's, and it's uh, google.org, uh, so it's the sort of non-profit side of it, comes to the web with a social research imagination. So it says, what, can we use web data to do, in some sense, social research? And, and, what, and what, they, what they did, as you all know, um, is they analyze um, flu and flu-related queries, uh, and they they and they geolocated them. So where and, and thereby, in some sense, determining or trying to determine where flu is at, and then they took those findings and then correlated them with with online traditional um, methods. So the surveillance, the sort of five, four or five sur surveillance techniques of finding where flu is, um, emergency room reports, etc. So they grounded, um, they grounded uh, the web data. Okay, those sort of short, brief introduction about about the the kind of data turn um, in 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 in, in internet-related research. I want to now situate uh, what um, what we're doing in Amsterdam Digital Methods in two contemporary sort of traditions. Oftentimes. Um, it is, it is thought that, that our work is, is quite similar to uh, two other uh, research programs. So I want to briefly introduce those. Uh, cultural analytics, I don't know if you've heard of that. Cultural analytics is a research program more in the digital humanities run by Lev Manovich, 
um, out of San Diego. And what, um, what they're doing is they are looking, uh, they're sort of quite big data-ish, um, and they're, they're, they take um, um, Time Magazine covers, um, uh, popular science covers or artworks, and they, and they look at the elements at the sort of um, composition of these, of these images or of video games, etc., and they try to find patterns. Um, the other one, um, Culturomics, um, using the uh, Google Ngram. Um, what they do is, is they use, uh, they query um, scanned books, um, so 200 years worth, 300 years worth of scanned uh, books uh, for terms, and thereby um, try to try to uh, understand or, or find uh, cultural trends. So for example, and this is one thing that I'll mention to a British audience, which, which is uh, amusing perhaps, is that English, uh, English spelling is being taken over gradually uh, by American spelling, according to culturomics. Um, now, when we turn to the web, so what, what you had there are two data types, um, which I would call digitized data. So, so they're online, uh, but the data are digitized. Um, and, 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 they, and like, in some sense, um, like the correlated data from in the Google Flu Trends project, they're considered quite good, good data. Um, this is just Christine Borgman's in, um, in the Digital Humanities Quarterly 2009. Good data are collected as cleanly as possible and as early as possible in its life cycle. They're captured regularly and preferably over long periods of time. Um, now, a lot of web data would fail spectacularly according to um, the, the sort of precepts of good data. And this is why a lot of, a lot of people are quite skeptical of web data, uh, web-related research, or, or web research for social, standing in for social research. Um, in any case, I want to introduce digital methods. It has a kind of slightly different outlook. Um, um, and this is how I kind of situate it. So what digital methods strives to do um, is, is to think about the use of web data, um, but not necessarily through traditional um, social uh, research methods or traditional methods, but rather through the methods of the medium. So methods that have been, in some sense, written for the medium. So data that comes from the medium and methods written for the medium. Um, so what do I mean by natively digital? Um, so natively digital is meant in a computing sense. Uh, so, so, the, so data that comes, natively digital data, natively, natively digital objects, natively digital method. In some sense, they're written, they're not, they, they, don't, they don't necessarily res, uh, come from there or they uh, are born from there. I don't mean this in an anthropological sense, but rather I mean in a computing sense that they're of the medium or written for the medium. Um, I, I, it's funny because I, was, I meant to bring my, these props I have a, 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 a Mac, um, and I have a, an adapt, a sort of lang a language, um, a language, a, um, a plug that allows me to transfer, the, the, to plug into the British socket. And I have one that's made for the Mac, and one that sort of you buy at any any shop, right? And so one is kind of native, yeah, it's made for the Mac, and the other one's sort of emulated, or, or um, so. What are digital methods? Um, or how do you go about, uh, um, what is the research program? What do you, how, do you, how do you do it, in some sense? So we ask the question, and this is quite different, um, and it's exploratory, it's experimental, um, but it provides a kind of, if for me at least, it provides one way forward um, of how to deal with the web um, and do research. So we, we ask ourselves the question, what objects or, or data are available? Um, Wikipedia edits, timestamps, um, tags, um, whatever. So what, what sort of natively digital objects are available? Then how do the dominant devices use them? So how, how do search engines treat clicks? How do search engines treat links? Ask this question. And then, and then, and then how do we repurpose these methods for research? So how can we repurpose online methods um, to do research? And then the trickiest question of them all um, is that um, how do we ground the findings? And can findings be grounded in the online? Can the online take that huge leap 
and under which, condi under which conditions and under what circumstances, um, and, and be a, a site for, for groundedness. Now, I want to contrast that particular research outlook with what you might call digitized method. So there are digital methods and digitized methods. Um, digitized methods, um, online surveys, uh, interviews. Uh, I mean, one of the interesting things uh, for me um, these days is, um, is in journalism and the idea of checking or fact checking or checking your source. Um, and how the web is sort of perhaps uh, in many cases switching the order of, of, of checking. So normally you would, uh, you would you know, do some literature research or some sort of research and then you would interview someone in order to ground your findings. Uh, well, increasingly you, after the interview you then go and look up the person or, or find more about. So the order of checking um, is one of the things that, that is raised by by the web. Okay, I want to show you very, very briefly a couple of examples of what I think are sort of digital methods at work. Um, and, uh, and this is one of my favorites. Um, this is, was in the New York Times, published in the New York Times, I think in 2009. And this is a map of the US um, where uh, recipes are queried prior to the sort of national feast in the US uh, Thanksgiving. So this is um, one day before Thanksgiving, 2009, and the darker the colors are, so the more purple, the higher incidence of queries. Um, so you see macaroni and cheese, which is not normally a Thanksgiving dish, but is a sort of southern uh, sweet potato, corn casserole in the corn belt, green beans, sort of west coast, turkey brine, quite northern. Yams, sort of very Western. Yeah, so the, and it's interesting when you, when you see these sorts of things, you think, okay, so how do I ground this? Um, do, you know, do we need then surveys? Do we need, how, you know, do we need the sort of sales data? Um, or is there other online data, for example, that we could use to begin to try to ground, begin to try to triangulate? Um, so these are sort of quite radical so what I want to do very, very briefly in the remaining time um, is, is introduce you and then show you two examples, introduce you to, to the sort of digital methods approaches from the micro to the macro, from the sort of smallest atoms to the, to the larger masses. Um, so how do you study? So the question is for us, how do you study all these natively digital objects, devices, etc.? So how do you study links? Um, how do you study a website? How do you study engines? How do you study um, spheres, like the blogosphere? Um, according to these principles. Yeah. Um, so we studied links. Um, so if, if you think about how Google treats links, generally speaking, as, as sort of markers of reputation, we, we also treat links as sort of markers of reputations, in indicators of, of association. Um, we study websites. Um, as I showed you a little bit earlier, um, as, as sort of yeah, archived, ar uh, archived objects awaiting some sort of use. If you go into the literature about web archiving, you'll notice that, that a lot of researchers are having trouble thinking about how do I study web archives. We're studying them um, in, the, in the example that I gave you previously. We're studying them in similar ways, um, creating sort of um, accounts of changes in, uh, in you know, sort of um, Political sentiment, or uh, or uh, not using sentiment tools, uh, but uh, doing uh, content analysis. Search engines, we're repurposing search engines uh, for uh, all sorts of uh, different kinds of uh, research projects, doing resonance analysis, for example, um, spheres, uh, etc. But I'm just going to show you a couple um, how to study the web, which is sort of larger uh, idea, and also how to study. Um, uh, social networking sites. I will mention that we st well, that we study Wikipedia um, in a particular way as well as as a, as, as a cultural reference as as opposed to its encyclopedianess. So we study uh, Wikipedia by comparing the same article across different language versions. So the the research that we put out recently is on the uh, Srebrenica massacre, uh, uh, comparing the Wikipedia uh, article 
in the Bosnian version, the Serbian version, and the Dutch version, which tell very, very different stories. Um, and Twitter we study as well, not necessarily with using the Twitter analytics um, sort of toolboxes and, and with, with, the, with the various in, uh, uh, interesting analyses we've seen so far, but rather um, we um, try to see whether or not we can turn Twitter into a kind of story-making uh, machine to uh, find out what is happening uh, on the ground um, during, d during different events. And one of the, one of the pieces of research that we did um, was on the, the Iran uh, revolution, uh, using similar methods uh, than we heard, as we heard previously, um, using re retweets um, to, to, to see whether or not we can tell, uh, like sort of turn Twitter into a storytelling machine about what was happening during the first 28 days um, in Iran uh, in June of 2009. Okay, but I want to get to the, um, the web, um, sort of big thing. How do you study the web using digital methods? Um, <clears throat> how the web is normally studied is oftentimes, first of all, in the singular or as a cyberspace or, or these, sorts of, these sorts of ideas. Uh, increasingly, um, there's a debate about whether the web should be, should be studied principally as a language space or more of a, a sort of national space. Um, we have sort of chosen the latter uh, largely because of the implementation, the widespread impl implementation of GOIP. Um, GOIP as an implementation on the web um, I th probably goes back to the, ya to the lawsuit that was um, against Yahoo um, uh, in a French court in 2001 where French users of Yahoo could view Nazi memorabilia pages um, and the, um, this was in, in uh, Tim Wu's book, uh, and, and, um, and, a, and a Jewish NGO sued Yahoo saying that French users should not be able to view these, um, these, uh, uh, these Nazi memorabilia pages. Um, since then, there's been this sort of widespread Im implementation of GOIP. Uh, if you type in um, google.com, you'll probably be uh, redirected to google.co.uk. You're sent home by default. Um, so, yeah, this is this is one of my more favorite artworks that tries to capture that by Budapest-based artist uh, Paul uh, Mutant. Um, so, what we do is we we study indeed um, national webs in the tradition of the Berkman Center, um, who studied the Iranian blogosphere, the the Russian blogosphere, um, and our our um, we have a sort of two-step piece two-step approach. First is to demarcate a national web. Um, and that is not an easy thing. Um, uh, there are a number of different techniques, but what we've decided uh, is a workable one is to use um, device, what we call device cultures. So those devices that claim to organize a national web, so whether it's Google or Alexa or Google Ad Planner or um, yeah, sort of na like sort of national recommendation services, the digs of various countries, um, and grab um, their top URLs. Um, and so we did this um, uh, with most recently for Iran. Uh, so we demarcated the Iranian national web not by using IP ranges, not by link analysis, um, not by the sort of typical ways of doing it, but rather by um, taking those URLs that are outputted by devices that claim to organize the national web. Um, we also have a tool um, to, that does something like this. And then the, the point of the research is to then use, um, to try to diagnose the condition of that web. Um, so this work goes back to a study that we did in 2007 on Iraq. Um, at the time, there were uh, there are accounts about what was going on on the ground in Iraq from on the on the on TV news, uh, from authentic bloggers like Salem Pux, um, and what um, and what we did um, or what we were thinking was was can we um, can we find out what's going on in Iraq by looking at the condition of its web. So what we did is we demarcated it what Ira what Iraqi websites were available hospital websites. Uh, university websites, governmental websites, uh, corporate websites, etc., and then we ran some some metrics, um, and what we found was largely a broken web. Um, the university websites were down. The URLs had been poached. Um, 
the hospital ones were down, etc. The only website that was vibrant was the Ministry of Oil. Um, and the Ministry of Oil also was the only website that I had a banner ad. Um, so anyway, in any case, what we um, have done is since then is we've developed a series of metrics in order to sort of diagnose the condition of, of, of a national web. And, and the metrics are uh, usefulness through fresh, freshness indicators, brokenness through link validators, responsiveness through uh, HTTP response codes, datedness according to the software versions running in dated users, the browser versions. Um, so this research, um, well, I mean, just to, to report the findings briefly, um, that that the Iran that quite quite counterintuitively, the Iranian web, um, despite the massive censorship and the massive repression, um, is up and running. Um, this just came out uh, the Annenberg School of Communications, University of uh, Pennsylvania. Um, I'll just do one more, um, two minutes. Platform research. Um, so, so how is it normally done um, in the sort of humanities, but of social sciences, not necessarily quantitatively, and how do we do it? Um, a lot of platform research is about um, presentation of self, the difference between online friends and real friends, the amplification of the social uh, through the online. Um, if you break up online, it's uh, uh, amplified. Um, um, and the opportunities, of course, for the, the online data provide for, for new forms of, or for social network analysis. Um, so what we have done uh, with, with social media generally is we try to develop a sort of new, new uh, form of research, it's not so new actually, um, that, but we've given, it, we've given it a name, we call it post-demographics. So, so all, in social media, the users, uh, oftentimes present themselves in quite rich profiles of their favorites. Favorite movies, favorite books, favorite heroes, favorite favorites. Um, and these are preferences. And so what we have done um, is we have um, grabbed the preferences of friends of presidential candidates. Um, in order to see whether or not we can be, and the, and the, the first project was more of an art project. Uh, we called it Elfrendo, elfrendo.com. Uh, it was an art project, it's, it's still online. Uh, but what we try to do through a proof of concept is to try to figure out whether we could profile the sort of media preferences or the, or the preferences of the, uh, of the friends of politicians, thereby uh, making political um, uh, TV shows, books, uh, politicizing them uh, or showing their politics. Um, and um, uh, this is from the last uh, U.S. presidential elections we're doing this currently now, but just to give you a sense of Obama's, fr Obama's friends' favorite TV shows are um, The Office, The Daily Show, Lost, and Heroes, and McCain, you remember him? McCain's friends' favorite TV shows are Family Guy, Project Runway, America's Next Top Model, <laughs> CSI, Desperate Housewives. Um, yeah, so this is published as post-demographic uh, machines. Um, this, is, um, this, is, this is the research program, how to study links, websites, engines, spheres, webs, Wikipedia, social media platforms, uh, Twitter. Um, we have a slogan, the medium is the method. Thanks very much. <laughs>